Hi, this is Antti from Neonto. We released a 1.6.1 update to React Studio. You should get it by just simply opening the studio and uh, the update should come up automatically. So what's new in this update? Uh, this is sort of like a between being a major update or just a regular update. This is a, some, some kind of like a medium size update. So what's new? We've added iOS and Android launch, launch images, which is basically uh, is the is the uh, let me show you it's the handy setting for PVA progressive web app applications so when you install the app sort of install it or you add it to home screen from the browser uh, on your mobile phone or mobile device the icon will appear on the home screen and when you click that then you get the launch image uh, or sort of like a uh, it, 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 it will be visible there until the app is loaded completely. So the, you will find the launch images just clicking the app settings and then click the iOS version, select the image and then you have the Android version. Please note that the Android and iOS versions are different because Android use, uh, makes it so that the icon is sort of in the middle of the screen. But you, you will find the... Find the uh, more specs when you just Google Android PVA launch image and iOS PVA launch image. So this is really handy. So Studio takes care of creating all the iOS sizes and the Android size and everything. And what, what else do we have new? We have the selector element, which is the tab navigation. This got a huge, huge update, which, is, which can be seen here. It works so that previously when you selected any of these and if you browsed somewhere inside the tab this would lose the selected selected uh, tab but now even we have the, we have a list here and there's a details view if i click back it's kept here uh, in this case it's the contact tab and if i do it again click somewhere else go back i'm still here and this is basically done so that so that the the selection or the selector index is uh, saved saved to data slot and here's the here's the uh, setting for taking the value uh, which is the which is the selected index it's taken from the data slot here and uh, when user changes the selection we save the new index to data slot here so that's how you how you can keep keep track which which tab is selected obviously you could you could also add make it so that it's persistent so that it will it will be stored between sessions if you close the browser it, it would still keep the selected but i'm not sure if that's useful and the default value well it's it's zero it's the first tab but you could put anything here one or two but uh, I will keep it zero because the first tab is usually the default 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 tab and then what else do we have we have the uh, the screen data source yes that's that's interesting so so this is just one screen and by clicking this button I'm changing the content here and doing this is basically that this screen has a data source, which is a data sheet. And I'm changing the, the row index that we are showing here. And I'm, I did, it, did this by script, so when we get to the end of the, end of the data sheet, it will go back to the zero. So you can see that after 11, we're back to zero. So how did we do that? This is pretty simple. We have a data sheet here containing these to-do items, just list, list a bunch of uh, sentences. And then for the screen, I have data source, onboarding. This is like it was before the update, but this is the new thing here. So we can take the active or the data, data row that will be used. We can take that index from the data slot. And by default, it's zero. Obviously, it's the first row. But uh, 
I've created the li script here for the for the button that it will update the data slot value so that it will uh, add one to it if if it's less than the less than the data sheet data sheet length but uh, that's pretty easy way to do this kind of stuff so that was the the second thing and then the picker well the picker has picker was a uh, Created so that previously you had to had to use the label and the value were the same thing. So now you can choose when you select the data sheet here. Let me show you. This is the data sheet. It contains city and then the ID. This is pretty common use case. So previously you had to you had to just use the city here, but now you can make it so that user sees when when clicks the picker or drop down sees the city, but what is actually selected is the ID. So let's go back here and go to picker settings. I've selected data sheet cities and label will be city. So label is the thing that user will see and the value is actually binded to ID column. And uh, when I run it, this one, I can select, for example, Tokyo and save it. And it will save the ID for Tokyo here in the data sheet. Let's make another one, London. Like this. So this is really like really handy and it's important stuff when you're doing something, saving something to the data database. And then what else do we have? We have a new setting for, for all the components that you can you can set the visibility of the component based on the based on the uh, props. So let's add a component. Here's a component. And let's add the component on the screen. Let's put it between the list and list and button like this. And now you will see that that it will it will the component will have the visible true or false data linkage. So if I want to hide this component, I just have to create a create a data slot or or you can obviously obviously bind it to data sheet as well. But now we have a DS DS visible data slot here. Which is controlling the controlling the visibility of the of the of the component, and by default, I want it to be true. But let's add a button that will hide it, or I could actually do it all inside the component, which is which is really really nice. This kind of X sign, where's the X sign? And what I want to do is just simply save data, the data slot, select the data, and I can just do it like this. That will be fixed. It will save the false value to the data slot, which is used for for uh, for the visible prop prop in this in this screen here. So then I can just run it to browser and we should be able to hide this this component by clicking the X button on the top right corner. And here we have the have the app running in the browser and we should be able to click that button and when I reload the app we should get it back visible. Obviously we could have a button for setting the data slot back to true so it would make it visible but this is just uh, for demo purposes so we can we can always reload reload this one. So here's the brief of the the quick brief of brief of the update 
you will you will find the complete change log from the from the change log and uh, there's also new update in the in the medium React Studios, React Studios medium hope you enjoy and let us know what you think about the new features and uh, have a great day